Guys, today's video is gonna be a good time. We've got our birds in from Murray McMurray Hatchery and we're gonna take you through and we're gonna talk to you about our chickens, our entire setup from the brooder to the laying hen house to the meat bird house to the pastured poultry to all this stuff. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna go through some frequently asked questions and give you guys some details on things that you might not know about raising chickens for your family so that you have food, so that you have eggs and so that you have awesome critters to play with on your little piece of land, whether it's a big farm or whether it's a small place in town. All right? All right, guys, we're pulling out of the post office right now. We have 50 baby Cornish cross birds right here. These are from Murray McMurray Hatchery and I'll talk to you a little bit about the hatchery. We'll talk to you a little bit about the setup. We're gonna take you around and show you the whole chicken setup here on the farm from the mobile coops that we move them to the uh, pins that we put them in outside so that they can run free and free range on pasture to our laying hens where they're out on the garden right now eating all the weeds. All kinds of fun stuff to learn in this video today. Hope you get some cool ideas. Let's get them home. Baby Chick Day is always a very fun special day. I'm going to give you guys a little spoiler here. Look at those birds. Aren't they cute? <laughs> so we're going to take these guys. Again, these are Cornish Cross and we have some Rainbow Rangers that will be coming also. All this is from Murray McMurray Hatchery. You can see it right there. I'll post a link down the video description. At some point, we're going to go to Murray McMurray and we're going to do a hatchery tour. So please jump in, subscribe to the channel and check out the Everything Chickens playlist. So if there's any question you have about chickens, raising chickens, raising your own meat birds, raising your own laying hens, all that stuff will be covered in our Everything Everything chickens. So this is kind of, I guess, a little bit redundant because we've done this before. But for those of you who are new to the channel, jump in, pound the like button, subscribe. We're going to show you the brooder setup. We're going to kind of do a full-on chicken tour here of the farm. We'll show you the mobile coop outside, and we'll show you where we keep our laying hens. And the laying hens are out there eating the weeds out of the garden before we plant it. So let's get inside here. I'm going to show you the brooder, and then we're going to introduce our birds. And we're going to count these birds as we set them in the uh, brooder in there. Now brooder means, let's take you in, we'll tell you what brooder means. When I say brooder, I mean a safe, warm place for your birds. So we've got some pretty cool setups going on in this brooder. First thing you need to know is food waste is a big problem with baby chicks. So we have these type of feeders right here where the chicks can't get their feet in there and scrape out the feed and make a big mess. That's something that's very, very important. We have two types of feeders in here and two types of waterers that we're gonna be using in here. This is a heat lamp and I have this little thermometer critter right here. And we'll take that and we'll shoot down in there and see how hot it is. So it's about 81 degrees right there, but right up underneath the light, it's about 102. That's what we're shooting for between 85 and 100 degrees. So this is a heat lamp setup. You can buy these at any of uh, your farm stores or anything like that, or I'll post links down in the video description. You can just order it on Amazon. All this stuff is readily available on Amazon or at Murray McMurray Hatchery. So let me show you our water real quick. And this is a Irwin Quick Grip. Let me show you that too. So we have our lamp hanging on a Quick Grip. This is just a, a, a gripper that holds everything in place. Now, when we get ready to hang up our water, which is right here, and we'll do that after about week number two, and you see we've got some gravels in there and we'll talk about that too there are little gravels down in the in the water you could use marbles you can use any kind of little rocks or anything that keeps the birds from getting in that water so you got to think about that it's very serious so your baby chicks can get in the water and they just came from a nice warm wet place so they want to go back to a nice warm wet place Oftentimes chicks will drown, so we always put a little bit of gravel, pea gravel, marbles, whatever you want to put in there uh, around in the water so that the birds don't get in the water and drown. That's something that happens to birds. What your job is as a bird owner is to protect them. You're protecting them from predators like cats that might come in here or dogs that might come in here. Once they're outside, raccoons, possums, weasels, uh, coyotes, all kinds of stuff. So your job as a chicken owner is to protect your birds. You're not building a chicken coop so much to uh, keep your birds in, it's to keep predators out. 
let me show you the other feeder that we use. So this is another feeder design that we use and it has a little roller up here so the birds can't roost up here because this rolls and they won't poop in their food because they will poop right in their food, guys. And this is a pretty cool little organic mix that we have. We get this from a local feed store and we're gonna be going to buy a big tote, a thousand pound tote of feed for these birds from Reedy Fork Farm in Elon, North Carolina. It's an organic feed farm. We'll set this in here. And we have the heat lamp for heat, and we also have another cool critter, this little guy. And you can pick this up at Murray McMurray Hatchery. I'll, again, I'll post a link. This is a plate that stays warm. So underneath here, it stays warm. The birds can get up underneath there like a mother hen. So this sits right down on the ground, and the birds will go up underneath there and stay warm. With this amount of birds, we want several options. In case that heat lamp goes out, these birds can get on here. And they can also get up top here. It stays fairly warm right there. Set this in. And now we're going to put our birds in. So this is a huge brooder. This is probably bigger than any of you guys will ever uh, ever use in your life. This is a huge, huge brooder. Uh, if you think about it, 50 chickens, there's 52 weeks in a year, one chicken a week, that's about right, okay? So you, you don't want to get too awful tired of eating chicken. All right, we're going to open up our box here. And we're just going to start introducing our birds. I think, yep, this should be, I think this is going to be 50 birds in this box, and then we've got 50 more coming tomorrow. This is going to be full of chickens, little baby chicks. And again, this is a monster 250-gallon tank. If I was only doing 25 birds or even 50 birds, I could use a small 100-gallon tank. I do like the tanks. They serve a dual purpose. So this will be for watering our cows, and we have eight cows or nine cows over there now. Um, so we'll be using this for multiple purposes here on the farm. So basically, every time we get a load of chickens, we go buy a new tote and we have a new water tank somewhere on the farm. So let's get these guys out. Look at them. They're already big. You're already bigger than regular chickens. Let's get you out there. There's one, 12, 16, 18. Now, once you get your birds from the hatchery, you see how they're all crowding around under this heat lamp? That's normal. They're going to crowd under there until they get warm. Now, if you find that your birds, after a few hours, are all crowded up underneath your heat lamp, then they're too cold. You need to move that heat lamp a little bit closer. And think about this. This is also a fire danger, too, because this stuff is dangerous. This is Shavings, dusty shavings can be a fire hazard. So you really, really want to pay attention. You want to make sure that you have some safety um, checks and balances in place. So we're going to zip tie this guy up. So in case it ever falls, it won't set our, uh, <laughs> we got one jumping out. It won't set our, uh, our brooder on fire. And brooder just means, it's, it's just like a, a mother hen. So this lamp and that little warming device is just like a mother hen. They call it a poultry brooder. Okay, so let's set these guys out. Now, I want to let you guys know, it's normal with this amount of birds to experience some death, okay? So it's normal. I would expect one to two of these birds, maybe three or four of these birds, to not make it, okay? That's a normal thing. So if you buy ten birds, expect maybe one of those birds or two of those birds might not make it. So always err on the side of having too many birds. In other words, Stick with about five. If you just want to have two or three chickens, get five chicks, okay? Order five chicks. Now you can see this baby bird trying to get in the water already. Here's a way, birds are very inquisitive. These chickens are very, very inquisitive. But here's a way, you can take your bird, take that little beak and dip it in the water, just gently, just the beak, just like that. And see that bird start to drink right there? He'll teach that bird, he'll teach that bird, and all these birds will teach each other. So. They're very inquisitive critters. As you can see, they're already starting to eat right here. They're getting into the feeders, and they're already hanging out under the light. So we're going to set the feeder back here just a little bit and let them be chickens. Pretty cool. Now you don't have to have an extensive setup like this. You see these totes back here in the back? My shop is a mess, by the way. Um, you don't have to have this extensive setup right here. You can just have a little storage tote like that. It works, it works just fine, but you do need to keep the birds warm all day and all night. So you've gotta keep those birds warm for at least, I'd say, 
two or three weeks, something like that. It depends on the type of bird. It depends on the breed. So if they're a laying bird, it might take two or three weeks in here. These birds in two weeks will be out on pasture. We'll take you out and show you the birds on pasture. By the way, if you're subscribed to the channel and you follow us, Earl is coming out of the garage. I've got all the parts to fix Earl and he's coming out of the garage, hopefully this weekend. So tune in this weekend. We're gonna have some good shots of Earl. I'll also post a link at the end of this video to our uh, Everything Chickens playlist so that you can follow along. So let's tell you where the birds go from here. So they're gonna be in the brooder for a couple weeks, several weeks, until they feather out or until it's warm enough out here. And warm enough means 50, 60, 70 degrees, depending on the size of the bird. So these young birds are unable to regulate their temperature. Now, how can baby chicks be shipped? Baby chicks can be shipped because nature has designed the baby chick to have a yolk sac in its belly so it doesn't need food or water for the first few days. That's so mother hen can continue to hatch out her babies and then take the entire brood out of the coop and run around in the grass or wherever it is. So that's just nature's way of allowing all the chicks to hatch underneath the mother hen and then she can take them out and let them forage. So this is our outside mobile coop area and I'll talk a little bit about that. That's a mobile coop. We move all over the farm here and this is Premier One fencing. This is called shock or not fencing. That's where the birds will go as soon as they're done in the brooder. Let's talk about this. This is our PVC mobile coop. It's approximately 28 inches tall. It has silver tin on the roof to reflect heat. It never gets hot up underneath this. I get a lot of questions. That's too small. That's going to burn the birds up. That's good for 35 to 50 birds. It's 10 by 15 and we move it every single day on the farm. Now, once the birds reach a certain size, they're kind of outgrowing this. What we'll do is we'll take this, we'll prop it up on a bucket, and then we'll put this shock or not poultry netting or any type of poultry netting. You'll see the other poultry netting over here in our garden with our laying hens. We have a electric fence charger right there, and that's from Premier One. There'll be links to all this stuff in the video description. There is Brower waterers and feeders right here, but typically, what we'll do after about the two or three week mark is we'll be feeding them this feed and it's the same chick starter except for we wet the feed down and the chickens just gobble it up and they put on weight quick and that's what we're shooting for is less feed waste and more weight faster so that we can get them in the freezer and it doesn't cost us as much pretty cool we're going to go over here to the garden and to our laying hens and we'll show you that setup while we're on the way to the laying hens i wanted to show you you see this dark green stripe right here that's where the mobile coop was moved. So it started way up there and it moved every day all the way through here, green, 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 dark green, lots of manure. As they get older, they produce more manure, they eat more food, and it goes all the way out here, turns around and comes back. Pretty cool. And then we start moving them on large paddocks like that right there. Let's go over here and look at the laying hens. So we have two gardens to feed our family here on the farm. This is our large garden plot that's closest to the house, and this is poultry netting. We have two runs of poultry netting all the way around this. It's doubled up in some places because it was a little bit long. The poultry netting typically comes in about 120 to 150 foot roll, and this doesn't have any power on it. We don't have to worry about these birds getting out. We clip one side of their wings once they're able to fly, and they'll never fly out of here. And they're in there getting the weeds and all the volunteer plants that come up just prior to us planting the garden. Let's go check out the laying hens in the laying boxes. Guys, the cool thing about what we have here is that you can do it on a small scale. You can do this. So we have about eight laying hens and these are for us, for our consumption. This is our outside coop. It's an eight by eight by four foot high outside coop. And they go out here and peck around the dirt. We also have a door on the other side. It's an automatic chicken door. Let's go look at that. So this is the automated chicken door from Chicken Guard and it locks down there so no critters can get in. It opens in the morning and it closes in the evening. There's a little sensor on there or you can set it to time or you can set it to manual where you push a button and you open them up. And again, the chickens are out here gobbling up bugs and worms and weeds and all kinds of stuff. This was a compost heap and they've been working that out too. So it's awesome. It's really cool to have everything with a symbiotic relationship. Now we have gourds sitting up here on the top of the chicken coop. We raise those gourds and we build birdhouses out of them. We set them up there and let them dry. That also provides the chickens with a little bit of shade down here in the outside run. Let's look at the coop because it's a pretty intuitive design. 
All right guys, I'm pretty proud of this coop. This is, in my opinion, the perfect backyard chicken coop. So this is about four by eight. Our nesting boxes are on the outside and we have an eight by eight run out there. We have to clean it out probably once every three to six months, something like that. Or we can just keep adding litter, adding litter. And then one day we'll come out with a wheelbarrow and scoop it all up. This is mobile. In other words, it's not attached to the ground. It's sitting up off the ground. There's a reason why it's sitting up on four by fours where you have chickens you will have mice you will have rats you will have mice and rats and you want to avoid that so what we've done here is we've raised that chicken coop up so that the mice would have to go up the little ladder into the chicken coop and we can close the door every night on our coop and we don't have to worry about the mouse problem cats also help with that too so we've got some kitty cats that run around the barnyard here so let's go and we'll show you the uh, inside of the coop how it's all designed and how we've made it so super easy to gather our eggs and take care of our chickens without it being a huge chore so in other words these chickens take probably 15 minutes a week and basically all that is is checking the food checking the water and gathering up the eggs so we've got two little bolt locks right here and we'll pull our door open there's a string that keeps the door from opening too awfully far. And in here is the inside area of the chicken coop. I have a board right here that will slip up. I slide the board up and I park my wheelbarrow on purpose right up underneath here. Let me show you real quick here. So my wheelbarrow is underneath here. So all I gotta do is slip this board up and rake all my manure right into here and spread it right on the garden. Pretty cool and a good way to store your wheelbarrow. Inside the coop here, we have our feed and our feed is hanging. We don't want our feed on the ground. You can see feed waste. That's feed waste right there. The birds will kick the feed out if we've got it too close to the ground and they've been kicking feed out right here. So we'll let them eat all this and that's what the mice want to eat for sure. I also hear a wasp making a noise at me. So <laughs> there's a wasp right here we might stay away from. But the feeder is hanging. Inside there, you'll see there are uh, roosting poles all the way across there. And that's, again, enough for about 15 birds to roost. This is a 4x8 coop. We'll close this guy up. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please jump in and subscribe, guys. There's just a wealth of good information for you to be a little bit more sustainable, to live a good, healthy, sustainable life, and to be able to feed yourself. I think that's more important now than it ever was. Let's look at these laying boxes. We'll show you how easy and simple this is. So we've got a little latch right here. Push that latch, and this automatically raises up. We took a shock that goes on a hood of a car and we mounted it inside here so that this would automatically stay up, just like that. So it's spring loaded and it stays up. If you wanna know what type of shock we used, it was from a Buick Regal, 1987 Buick Regal. So in here are nesting boxes and we can just simply reach in and pick our eggs out. We probably have some eggs in here. I haven't gathered up the eggs today. Typically, all the birds will want to lay in the same nesting box. So we've got eggs here. I don't have my basket with me right now, but we'll gather those up in a little bit. There's a handle up here, and we'll just mash this back down and latch it. So we have a latch on here to hold it down and to keep raccoons and possums and critters out of there, because if we keep the predators out, we don't have to worry about them. Also, there are motion lights, solar motion lights, all around this entire coop right here, and that helps keep predators away too, because what does a predator fear more than anything? Being discovered. So when it lights up, if a predator comes out, so say a raccoon or a coyote or a fox comes out here, and it lights them up, they go away. They just go away. So we have never had a predator issue on this chicken coop. So the post office just called and said the next 50 birds are here, the box is up there. My math was totally off in there. So we've got 51 birds in there now and we have 50 more birds coming. So hopefully we'll have 101 baby chicks. What you need to know is that the Cornish crossbird is gonna grow much faster, it's gonna waste less food, it's gonna consume less food, and it's gonna be uh, processed a whole lot sooner than the Rainbow Ranger or the Ranger type broilers. So the Ranger type broiler might have a little bit better flavor, a little more brown fat, but they're gonna consume just about the same amount of food as the uh, Cornish Cross, and they're gonna live longer, which means if the Cornish Cross takes 1,000 pounds of food, the Rainbow Ranger might take 1,100 pounds of food because they're gonna be alive for probably two or three weeks longer. They're a smaller bird. They dress out to be a smaller bird, where a Cornish Cross bird at about eight weeks might dress out to be 
seven to eight pounds, a Ranger broiler might be five to six pounds. So it's something to consider when you're buying feed and you're feeding these animals and therefore your consumption, you want to get the maximum bang for your buck. There's no steroids here like, like you see on the documentaries everywhere. There's no steroids, there's nothing. These birds are bred to grow fast. It's selective breeding. So we're gonna go get the next batch of birds and we'll compare them and show you guys what they look like as babies. And you can follow along on the channel and see how they grow throughout their life process. And we'll show you how to process them. We've got some great videos out there right now on how to process your meat birds too. So that's our setup. That's our setup for our laying hens. That's how we make it easy. Having chickens should be easy. It should be fun. It should be a joy. So we're going to go. The post office just called me and said that the ranger broilers are there too. So we got to zip back over to the post office and pick them up. Just know if you order chickens that you're going to get a call early in the morning most of the time from the post office to come and pick up your birds. It won't be delivered out to your mailbox or anything like that. It's pretty cool, pretty simple, and uh, it's a good system. So you might get called and have to go in after work and pick up your birds. These are the Rainbow Rangers. So you can see they're a little bit darker chicken. I'm going to release them into the brooder real quickly, count them, make sure we've got the right count, and then I'm going to show you the difference in the Cornish Cross and the Rainbow Ranger. The Cornish Cross, I can already tell, is probably about a third bigger than the Rainbow Ranger or the Ranger Broiler. I'm not sure exactly if they're called Rainbow Rangers or if they're just called Ranger Broilers. These are all meat birds. There were four extras in there. So there were two extras in the Cornish cross box and four extras in there. So that makes for a total of 100 and <laughs> 105 birds. That's a lot of chickens, man. That's gonna be a lot of food. <laughs> These birds are gonna plow through some food. So let me pick up a Rainbow Ranger real quick and we'll show you the difference in a, in a Ranger broiler versus a Cornish cross. So. You can already see the Cornish Cross versus the Ranger. The Ranger is just a smaller bird. It grows a little bit slower. It's better for foraging. In other words, that bird will have, the Ranger bird will have more energy. It'll get out, it'll run on pasture. It does good on pasture and it does good free ranging where the Cornish Cross bird just eats and kind of lays down. So the Rainbow Ranger broiler might be the choice for you if you want birds running around in your yard or in your barnyard. And the Cornish crossbird might be the bird for you if you want the birds to be a little more sedentary, to waste less food, and to grow faster. They make a huge, delicious breast. Now there is a little bit more, I don't want to say of a gamey flavor, but there's a little bit more flavor in the uh, Rainbow Ranger broiler, or the Ranger broiler. I, I think there's a little bit more flavor. Um, it just has a, how to describe it? A more robust taste, I guess. So let's give you the answers to some frequently asked questions here. How do I tell if my birds are warm enough? Well, they're too cold if they're doing that. But if they're exploring, they're just fine. They're just fine. If they're all bunched up underneath the light, that means they're too cold. If they're all away from the light, say crowded into a corner way far away, then they're too hot. That's something that you need to listen to. You got to listen to your birds. They'll tell you what they want. All I want is one bird. Well, don't do that, okay? Get at least three birds because these are birds. They flock together. They need companionship. They need more than one bird to stay warm. So do that. Make sure you don't just buy one bird and for goodness sakes, don't go out on Easter and buy a bird and dye a certain color because they just always end up basically dead. It's just the wrong thing to do. So if you're trying to be a good parent and you're buying Easter chicks, or Easter ducklings, buy them and be responsible and raise them intelligently, okay? It makes a difference. Do I leave the heat lamp on all night and all day? Yes, these birds need to stay warm. Now the red light right here gives them a little better sleep and wake cycle. You can use a red heat lamp or you can use a clear heat lamp. This is a 250 watt heat lamp bulb. All the stuff that we're using here, there'll be links down in the video description for you, okay? How do I know when it's time to take my birds out of the brooder and move them outside? And do I need to bring them in at night? Well, if your birds are ready and the temperature's right outside, you don't need to bring them in. You need to harden your birds off. Hardening your birds off means 
turning the light off. So at about two or three weeks, you're gonna turn that light off for periods of time. If it's 20 degrees in here in the, in the shop or in the brooder area or in the garage where you're gonna have them, then you don't wanna do that for very long because the birds will get cold. So you gotta think about it. Once they're feathered out, in other words, they lose this fuzz and they get feathers, that's when you can start hardening your birds off. If it's 65 or 70 degrees outside, in the evening time, it gets down to 60, you'll probably be just fine with your birds as long as their feathers have come out. Now, do you need to bring them back in at night? No, unless it gets down to like 20 degrees or something like that, but you can always put your heat lamp, run an extension cord out uh, if it's safe, and put a heat lamp out there for your birds to get up underneath. We have for winter time, in other words, if these birds would have come in February, we have a little mobile doghouse box that we put in there and it has a heat lamp in there. So the birds have access to heat if they need it. They will get spoiled on the heat. So you want to try and break them in and harden them off as best you possibly can so that they don't require heat. Josh, what if it rains? Are my birds gonna be okay out there in the rain in that mobile coop? Yes, they'll be just fine. Now, if you have a monsoon rain and it rains for like six days or so, then you might wanna start seeking out a way to let your birds get up off the ground. You could take boxes, milk crates, Coca-Cola crates, something like that. Just get creative. You can build a little stand out of wood, out of plywood if you wanted to. Just put some little wooden blocks in there just to get the birds up so that they don't get cold and get sick. So that's something to pay attention to. Can they be outside in a storm? Absolutely, it's not a big deal. These are chickens. These aren't uh, little snowflakes, they're chickens. Uh, do they get hot in the mobile coop? No, they don't get hot in the mobile coop. If it's 101 degrees outside, yeah, you might see the birds panting. But when you build your mobile coop, you wanna build your mobile coop with a reflective color, not a dark color. So you don't want a black roof or a dark, uh, like gray roof or you don't want a, um, a red roof on it. You want a reflective color that radiates heat upwards. Now they're going to pick up a little bit of heat from uh, the tin roof, but if you think about it, if the bird is 12 inches tall and the coop is 26 to 28 inches tall, it would be like you standing in an 18 foot tall shed that's open on all four sides. You're going to stay pretty cool. It's shading you, but it's not you know cooling you and you won't overheat. Uh, next question that people ask a lot, uh, do I need to move it every day? Well, it depends on your manure load. So if you have a 12 by 14 coop and you have 30 birds in there, you might be able to leave it in one spot for two days. But as these birds get older, they eat more and they poop more. So you gotta think about that. If it's out on your lawn or out on pasture, we call this pasture, but it's actually, it's our lawn. It's what we use for lawn fertilizer. So the chickens serve several purposes that we take feed and we turn it into fertilizer and it builds a soil right here in front of our house. It also builds a soil in front of our garden. So it's all a symbiotic relationship. It all works together. Can I feed the chickens food scraps from the kitchen? Yeah. What if they're moldy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Chickens love that stuff. They need a little bit of grit. Okay. So to digest and break down some foods, they need some grit. It's as simple as stopping at the store and buying some grit at, uh, at your local like farm supply store, or just go down to the creek and take a bucket and scoop out some sandy grit and put it in there for them and they'll eat it. And that's how they digest food. So chickens are a little different. Um, let me pick up a chicken. I'll talk to you about another scenario that people ask me a whole lot about. So they're like, oh man, my chicken's got a big bulge right here. Well, the first chamber of the chicken's stomach is right in its neck, right there. My chicken's got a huge bulge. Well, guess what, dude? Your chicken's full, man. <laughs> That's the first chamber of the chicken's stomach. So that is a fairly normal thing, okay? Your birds are eating good. After about the second week here, we'll start feeding them on and off. In other words, we'll feed them for 12 hours and we'll take the food away for 12 hours. And we'll feed them for 12 hours and we'll take it away for 12 hours. That's the way we do it. We only feed enough food that these birds can consume it in about a six to 12 hour period. If we put too much food out in the uh, mobile coop, then we're gonna have mice and rats. So we want our birds to be able to eat every single morsel of food and be ready to move. So if they're hungry, they'll follow you and they'll move better. So this is just a lot of food for thought here, guys, a ton of food for thought. You do have to have your heat lamp on. You make sure your birds are warm, dry, fed well, and plenty of water, and they'll do just fine. 
Next question. Josh, I've got a bird and on his butt there's a bunch of poop stuck to it. What do I do? There'll be a link at the end of this video to a video that shows you what to do. Subscribe to the Stony Ridge Farm and check out the Everything Chickens uh, playlist. You'll see what to do for poopy butt. That's how you get it off. You take a warm washcloth and you get it off. And I've got a video totally dedicated to poopy butt. And that happens and the birds get stressed. Josh, do I need to put uh, apple cider vinegar in my water. No, you don't have to put apple cider vinegar in your water. Don't go crazy with your chickens. This is a shocking experience. So put them in the brooder, keep them warm, keep them fed, keep them dry, and don't stimulate them a whole lot. Don't take this baby chick and put it up against your face because that is one big salmonella factory right there. Salmonella is naturally occurring in the gut of the chicken. If you handle chickens, wash your hands before you go touching food or touching your face, okay? It's just very important that you do that because you can get salmonella and the next thing you know, you'll have poopy butt and you'll be, <laughs> you'll be in the bathroom. So it's very important, guys. If you have any other questions, please post them down there. I would love to answer any questions. Guys, if you're reading through and you know about chickens, please answer questions for people. This is an interactive deal here. Uh, this is YouTube. It's social media. And I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this taught you a little bit about raising your birds. Please jump in, pound the like button, ask questions, be a community, work together. We all need each other. It's a great thing here on YouTube to be able to share this with you. So thanks a lot for joining me here on the Stony Ridge Farm today. Uh, next video that comes out should be Earl. We're going to drive old Earl out of the garage. And then we've got a dump truck broke down on the other side of the farm. So we've got all kinds of fun content for everybody here on the Stony Ridge Farm. Guys, thanks a lot for joining me. Pound the like button. We'll see you next time on the Stony Ridge. All right? Woo! Yeah, come on down to the Stony Ridge.